This is the Book Legion Podcast, where we review thought-provoking books to give our legionnaires the knowledge they need to dominate the next level of their life. Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining me on the Book Legion this week. This is your host, Tizer Evans. This week I'm going to be covering an interesting book called The Hermetica, which is by Timothy Freak and by Peter Gandy. So now this week, I'm not going to cover who the authors are, uh, because really what the authors are is they just translated the Hermetica. So the Hermetica is the lost wisdom of the pharaohs. So that there's these tablets, these ancient uh, philosophies that were found back in the 1460s that that brought new life to the Renaissance. And really, a lot of these principles were used for the Renaissance men like Michelangelo, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, and so on and so forth. Um, They're the ones that uh, these types of premises also influenced Shakespeare, uh, Sir Francis Bacon, and the other guy who acted as Shakespeare and wrote all the literature. Um, So what I wanted to cover, though, was just these some of these principles, because I think that they're very relevant today, um, as they were five, 6,000 years ago. So uh, that is what the book is on. It's a spiritual book, the Hermetica, based on the principles of Hermes. Now, Hermes was kind of like a demigod, or you might hear him called thrice great Hermes as well. See, these are the Hermetic principles um, who he had a connection, spiritual connection to the cosmos and brought the teachings of the creator to the pharaohs, uh, teaching them how everything really works uh, within the world. So this is a very condensed version, which is why I love the book. It's only uh, about 145 pages. I read it in about four or five days. It's a very easy read. Uh, Really what it starts with is they give you, um, there's like 10 chapters and they tell you, hey, here's basically what you're going to read, the breakdown and translation of Hermes uh, and modern day kind of description and language, the the meaning behind it. And then you read the the actual translations that came from the tablets and a kind of a uh, condensed version. So I'm going to jump into my three favorite takeaways from the book. So my first uh, big takeaway for me that really resonated with me is this concept of the mind of God. And it's actually in the introduction. So it wasn't even a chapter and I already started highlighting in the introductory phase. But let me read you Um, this first paragraph. At the heart of Hermes' teachings is one simple idea. God is a big mind. Everything which exists is a thought within the mind of God. And so this really made me step back and think for a minute that like conceptually then, like I'm living in some type of creator's mind um, is really what was kind of really fascinating to think about that. And so it goes on to really talking about the cosmos is a representation of God's mind and you're a product um, of the cosmos, right? With the way we had the Big Bang and how the moon causes the tides. And so in that way, what Jesus talked about is that you are in the image of God. Maybe not directly uh, that the creator, God, all of whatever you want to call it, probably does not look like we do in this type of physical form because he is all forms. He is all everything within the cosmos because you're inside of God's mind. And so, you know, they, they dove in on this, this concept and it just really got me thinking, um, how cool is that? And also how terrifying in some, for some regards, Hermes teaches that the mind of the human being is made in the image of God's big mind. If we can free our mind from the limitations imposed by the physical body, we can experience the mind of God. And so again, this is a philosophical, spiritual book, and really what it wants you to do is help you and gives you a guide on how to connect with God and your higher self, right? Which are all one and the same. And so this is what it's talking about, is once you realize that you are not this body, you're not your job title, you're not a husband, you're not a father, right? you're not a wife, you're not a mother, you simply just are. Um, you start to not be attached to our societal labels or to be uh, fixated on the five senses of reality, you can start to then uh, transcend self. And when you transcend self, then that's when you have a connection to God. And and I think that that's what the prophets, uh, Jesus, Muhammad, um, maybe even Joseph Smith, those people were able to transcend Buddha, were able to transcend and tap into a different type of energy, a source of the creator. And then through that streaming consciousness, we got their works with it they put out. So uh, that was just something in the beginning of the book that I just I enjoyed reading. So I wanted to have you guys uh, make sure you read the introductory because the introductory was uh, one of the best parts of, of the book for me. So the next chapter I'm going to cover is chapter four. Chapter four is the contemplation of creation. And why I wanted to cover this chapter is because we should all contemplate creation. But what it really focuses on, though, is 
for you to understand how special and, and what a miracle everything is in our existence and within our life, right? Like everything is in the image of God. Everything is special because everything was di di divinely created or has been divinely created in the mind of God. And so well, I really, uh, I love this to contemplate because it really talks about us returning and trying to implement more of our childlike wonder, right? When you're a child, everything is new and fascinating. The smells, the touches, you know, I have a, a six and seven year old. They ask so many questions because they're so curious because everything is new and exciting to them. And we lose that as we get older or we get disgruntled because we get our head down into our nine to five which does not have any relevance to what our purpose is here, right? That's just a means to an end uh, to conform to this type of society, to buy our house and to be able to pay for food and those types of things. Um, and when we do that, we can get into a place where we don't understand truly how special we are or that everything around us is. And then we start to lose touch with our purpose and really the reality of why we're here, uh, which can lead to depression, anxiety, all these different types of things. And so, you know, the world is a miracle, yet we take it for granted. If we take time to reflect, it becomes obvious that our, we are surrounded by profound mysteries. The universe is a gigantic work of art signed by an unknown master. Humble amazement is a prerequisite for coming to know God. And so again, I think this is just being having a uh, sincere gratitude and wonder and curiosity and appreciate uh, being appreciative of the experience that you're currently having right now. Uh, a lot of us get so entrenched again in that day to day that we forget really what a miracle it is to be having this experience on a day to day basis. And here's a an actual direct quote from uh, the Hermetica: "For the invisible may only be seen with thoughts which are themselves invisible." Right. Again, it just wants you to take you through this this exercise of what is a thought? What is that versus the reality that you can see, hear, touch and smell? Um, so to contemplate uh, creation. So this is a, uh, the, the writings out of the Hermetica. It goes on for about six pages. Um, but another good, another really great chapter to get you thinking of all the things that you have in yourself. And I'm consequently reading this book, too, called The Course in Miracles. It's a thick book, and it's a daily lesson that you work in there. And it's the same type of thing to get you to see objects or people or yourself just for exactly what it is. Nothing special, nothing bad. It just is. So the next chapter I want to cover is Chapter 6, which is the Circle of Time. Now, I've personally been fascinated by time for a long time. Um, once I, I heard a medium speak and, and, and talk about, you know, time is vertical, that we're living all of our lives all at once and in infinite possibilities and infinite uh, dimensions and infinite realities, uh, that really got me thinking that time is a man-made construct, so time is only linear in, in our reality. It, it is not. So this talks about time as being a circle, which... Uh, really appreciated because it just really got me on this thought exercise. So I'll read you guys a passage. The future has yet to happen. It does not exist. The present moment passes so quickly that it has no permanence. Before we have seen said now, the moment is gone. We can never catch the present. So in a way, it could be said to exist. The mystical insight into the illusionary nature of time is a way to glimpse the oneness of God who exist beyond time. And then here's an actual, and this is their synopsis of the chapter. And then here's an actual quote from inside the Hermetica. The present issues from the past, the future from the present, everything is made by one continuity. Time is like a circle, right? So time is just really just doing this, uh, which is really fascinating because then you don't know where the beginning or end is, which is not really important because again, you're in the mind of God just having an experience. So the point is to appreciate the experience and to progress in the evolution of your soul. And so these are all the lost uh, teachings of the pharaohs that came down from thrice uh, great Hermes or Hermes. So, you know, it, was, it was like a demigod. And this is a lot of what you hear about the schools of mysteries, uh, what a lot of these teachings were, right? And so this is what the Knights Templar, the Freemasons, the Rosicrucians, these types of kind of... Um, what we'd call fringe or secret societies, these were those teachings that they were teaching people basically how to be connected with oneness, how to transcend body, how to transcend this experience to have a connection to God while you're having this experience and remembering who you actually are, not that you are Thai, 
the host of the book legion is not me um, beyond this right experience so really fascinating book so if you want to take a you know thought exercise and challenge your own spirituality beliefs and learn what the pharaohs and the secret societies uh, like to learn about as far as spirituality and, and, and time and oneness and what creation means and how we came about and how we were created, uh, the Hermetica is great. For 145 pages, it'll um, take you on a real thought exercise. So check it out. It was only like six or seven bucks on Amazon, maybe $8 at most on Amazon. I'll post the link in the show notes below. And if you guys haven't done so, check out uh, Grind So Elevate. I'm actually consequently wearing uh, this shirt. This is my other podcast. I tell you guys I interview um, business people from all over the world who are great at what they do. So it might be leadership, sales, uh, SEO, marketing, e-commerce, you name it. I've probably interviewed them. Uh, a lot of real estate lately as well. So check out Grind So Elevate on all platforms. Like You can find the Book Legion. Make sure you're subscribed to the Book Legion as well so you get the notifications when the new episodes come out. Uh, but without further ado, thank you so much. appreciate you guys listening. <laughs> Thank you.